th there's also, I think, a real problem about anything that's eternal. I'll, I should probably close with this. I, it will happen to all of us that at some point you get tapped on the shoulder and told, not just that the party's over, but slightly worse, the party's going on, but you have to leave. <laughs> and, it's, and it's going on without you. That's... That's the, that's the reflection, I think, that most upsets people about their demise. All right, then. Let's, because it might make us feel better, let's pretend the opposite. Instead, you'll get tapped on the, on the shoulder and told, great news, this party's going on forever, and you can't leave. <laughs> you've, you've got to stay. <laughs> The boss says so, and he also insists that you have a good time. <laughs> I've read about David's father, and I had a bad time when my own father passed on, but the father proposed by monotheism is the father who doesn't die, who reassures his children, don't worry, I'll never leave you. You'll never see the end of me. You'll never get the chance to feel sorry. I'm always there. I'm the absolute ultimate in dictatorship, and in my courts there's no appeal. Do, do you really think that this would cheer up anyone of sentience or humanity or capable of feeling of irony? I submit it's out of the question. I mean, there, there's, this, there's a false assumption about science uh, operating here. Science is not in, in principle committed to the idea that there's no afterlife or that the, the mind is identical to the brain right. or that materialism is true. Science is completely open to whatever, in fact, is true. And if it's true that the consciousness is being run like software on the brain and can, by virtue of ectoplasm or something else we don't understand, can be dissociated from the brain at death, that would be part of our growing scientific understanding of the world if we could discover it. Now, uh, and there's, there are ways we could, in fact, discover that if it were true. The problem is there are very good reasons to think it's not true. And we know this from now 150 years of neurology where you damage areas of the brain and faculties are lost. And they're clearly, it's not that everyone with brain damage is perf has their soul perfectly intact. They just can't get the words out. This is, the, you, everything about your mind can be damaged by damaging the brain. You can cease to recognize faces, you can cease to know the names of animals, but you still know the names of tools. I mean, the, 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 the fragmentation in, in, in the way in which our, our mind is parcellated at the level of the brain is not at all intuitive, and, had, and there's a lot known about it. And what we're being asked to consider is that you damage one part of the brain and the mind, something about the mind and, and, and subjectivity is lost. You damage another and, and, and yet more is lost. And yet, if you damage the whole thing at death, we can rise off the brain with all our faculties intact, recognizing grandma and speaking English. Now, 